Abuse of power and lack of accountability have become synonymous with the South African police services. We speak to Ian Cameron of Action Society. Welcome, Ian. Thank you very much, Chris. It's good to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Ian, can you give us the detail of the Minister of Police's security detail at an ANC meeting on the Cape Flats the other night? Oh, it's, it's, it's really, really frustrating to see. So I got contacted by several specialized units uh, in the last week that were ordered to look after the, uh, the Minister of Police in Philippi in the Cape Flats. Uh, just a few nights ago where he was attending an ANC meeting. And I think the frustrating part of this is that that very area, Brown's Farm, namely Brown's Farm, hardly ever sees the police because the police themselves don't go in there. It's just too dangerous. So, you know, um, now he gets escorted. This is my question. What makes Becky Tele so much more special than the rest of us, especially poorer communities? They can't afford any kind of other um, uh, resource or help. They are completely dependent on the state for their safety. Yet, Minister Becky Trele has six, yes, six flying squad vehicles escorting him, three public order policing vehicles, and three minibuses from TRT. Now, if you consider if each of those had a minimum of two members in them, and we know it wouldn't have been that few, but let's say for a moment it was two, two members per vehicle, that's 24 police members to look after one minister, and the cherry on top is that it's not even for police minister business. So, you know, the question we must ask is, is the South African police service now a private security service for the ANC? Because how on earth can it be that some areas don't have police capacity, flying squads, phones, their command center phones were off over the weekend. No one could reach them. No one could, uh, uh, you know, really coordinate any kind of, of police operation. These members are in dire straits. They want to be able to work, but now they get abused to look after the minister while their real work is uh, is falling to, to shreds. Talking about protection detail, uh, what is the latest on the blue light mafia members who publicly assaulted civilians? Oh, this is this is even worse. Um, all eight of them are back at work. They they are still on uh, their office duty. So they're not allowed to work outside. But I think the horrific part, Chris, is that um, the reason for them being back and the police have got this absolute nonsense excuse that it's part of the disciplinary process and that the 60 days have lapsed that they were meant to uh, sort out the, the disciplinary process. But now after 60 days, it's still not sorted. They're back at work. And instead of SAPs coming and saying, can we extend by another 30 days, they didn't do that. So all eight are back at work, despite the fact that they're being investigated. Now, there is no reason on this earth for them to have taken longer than 60 days. On top of that, um, the night before last, I get called by victims saying they are now being asked or demanded by SAPS to come and testify at a disciplinary hearing yesterday. So I think that the, um, the National Commission had a red face over the weekend when he was asked about the employment status. And the consequence was that he started asking around inside SAP saying, you know, what's going on with, with these eight? And now suddenly they're jumping with the um, with the disciplinary process. Now, on top of that, I think another part to consider is remember that the Presidential Protection Unit doesn't report to the same divisional commissioner as the rest of the VIP protection units. The Presidential Protection Unit reports to Wally Rueda, and Wally Rueda actually mainly reports directly to the president. Now, we all know the controversies not only from our beloved president, but also from Wally Rueda. So it's basically this little private security force that they've built on the side with police power that benefits a certain group of politicians. Um, so, so no, it, you know, it's, it's ironic because on the same day that we hear that they, their suspension has lapsed, on the very same day, another blue light accident, a fatal one at that, it happens in the East Strand in Gauteng, in, in close to Kempton Park, where a motorcyclist was killed in a blue light accident. You know, uh, so, so these incidents aren't decreasing. There's no form of accountability. The fact that the National Commissioner didn't even know what the, what the status of this was. Now, people can say, but should he know each one? Well, if it's the protection detail of the Deputy President, yes, he should know exactly what's going on. Those cops must be held to a higher standard. But instead, South African Police Service in certain parts 
is becoming an iron fist for the ANC, and that's not doing what it's meant to do. And 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 while those political cops do what they do, the good ones are suffering and are being deployed in places that's too dangerous, or they have to also look after politicians while normal South Africans suffer. Now, Ian, you've spent the morning in Parliament. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so uh, Action Society made two submissions this morning, one regarding a new bill uh, about the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, as we know, IPID, and the other around the NPA. Now, the one around IPID is, is, is uh, yeah, unfortunately also not great news. The bill um, uh, proposes that more power or control be given to the office of the of the police minister, which means that IPID would report to the police minister, which in effect means that it's no longer an independent body. And we know IPID is not what it's meant to be at the moment, but at least it's something. And uh, if we if we give that to the police minister, he will determine who heads up IPID. Um, so, so, so we he presented will have complete control of IPID. Complete control. I mean, this is the same as having some kind of a regulator, let's say a health services regulator, um, that also provides health services. It just doesn't make any kind of sense. It basically means that the Minister of Police will have a complete monopoly on law enforcement in South Africa, law enforcement in terms of SAPs. Um, so we obviously oppose that. We've suggested that it become a Chapter 9 institution to not only protect its its independence, but also to see that it's got a, a very, very strong mandate to act. I said to them that trying to to, uh, to to solve issues in the police with IPED as it is now or as in the proposed bill is like trying to win the Durban July with donkeys. I mean, I've said that before about about SAPs. This time it's, it's IPED. And uh, we we can simply not allow it. So so we've we've opposed it. Uh, we in fact said it should become a chapter nine institution, and we're hoping that it will happen that way. Uh, I must say it, it was it was mostly agreed. You know our our stance on the matter uh, seemed to be uh, in line with what everyone else also submitted. So I think we're on the right track in terms of the MPA. Uh, it was regarding possible decentralisation, having more of a decentralised model. Quite similar in terms of us trying to say that it, it must have independence. It was ironic because every time we mentioned independence, members of the ANC in those portfolio committees would say, uh, what do you mean by independence? And the answer is simple. It's political interference from the very ANC that they belong to. And in the po police portfolio committee, the chairperson uh, asked me, but how can you say that the minister uh, you know, uh, shouldn't do this because the, the, the in terms of the IPID bill, because the minister is not a cop. And I said to him, Chairperson, with all due respect, Becky Taylor behaves like a police commission. He doesn't behave like a minister. He's blurred the lines. The the National Commission of Police, because he said he argues that the National Commission is appointed by the president. And yes, on paper, it's true. But in reality, the, the, the uh, police minister is filling that position at the moment. And it actually makes the National Commissioner look more like a lapdog that an actual cop or a CEO of the most important law enforcing function in this country. Thank you. That was Ian Cameron of Action Society speaking to Biz News about the latest abuse of power and lack of accountability in the South African police force. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Chris.